Uh, the folks at Channel 4 have asked me to give a long, and let us hope not boring, history of my life. Uh, we'll try to do that in as short time as we can. I was born in Greer County, southwestern corner of Oklahoma, December 15, 1911. Which means I'm not a kid anymore. Well, I became director of the marketing division of the Oklahoma State Board of Agriculture, which was a good job. And one day I got a telephone call from Oklahoma a and A couple of guys up there said, WKY has contacted us. They want us to find them a farm broadcaster. Now they said, we've got several prospects on the list, but they said, you're the number one prospect. Do you want the job? I said, I don't know. I'll call, I'll call and get a description of it and see, see what might turn up. And in talking with them, uh, they had a figure in mind for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the salary. And I had a figure in mind for the salary. And I had heard a rumor that uh, the farm department at WKY Radio and Television was going to be closed down. Well, I happened to know Ed Gaylord, Mr. E.K. Gaylord's son. We were personal acquaintances. So I called Ed and made a date with him to come down and talk with him. I had told the management at WKY that I wouldn't take the job until I had talked to Ed Gaylord, the Oklahoma Publishing Company, owned the station. <coughs> so I went down to Oklahoma City and talked to Ed. Well, he said, and I told him, I said, now, I think I like what I'm looking at, but uh, I got this rumor that the farm broadcasting would be dispensed with soon at WKY Radio and Television. Ed Gaylord said, Russell, don't you believe it? He said, I don't know whether you're the man for the job or not. I think you probably are. But he said, as long as WKY and WKY Television is owned by the Oklahoma Publishing Company, which we own, he said, there'll be a farm department there. Well, I said, that's good enough for me. So I went back to the management of WKY Radio TV and told them, I said, okay, I've had assurance from Ed Gaylord that uh, there's always going to be a farm department here at this station. And I like the end prospects of the job. So it remains to be seen whether we can agree on the salary. I said, I've got my sights up here You've got your sights just a little lower. So how long do you think, if I'm satisfactory, how long do you think it'll take you to get your salary, your idea of a salary, moved up to my salary? Oh, the manager said, uh, maybe a year and a half, two years, three years. But he said, it'll, it'll finally get up there. I said, okay, on, on that basis, uh, I'm, I'm gonna become your farm broadcaster. So I did. After I'd been on the air for, oh, I guess three or four months, management called me in and said, hey, you're spending entirely too much time on this job. We hear that you're getting there at 5.30 in the morning and you're not leaving the station except to go have lunch until sometimes 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Well, I said, to do a decent job, uh, that's kind of the way it's going. Well, I said, tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go find yourself a good assistant. And you hire him, but they gave me the figure and said, we're gonna move your salary on up to where you want it now. 
Well, <laughs> that was, I thought that was pretty good news. So uh, we went along and uh, every now and then they'd call me and say, well, we're gonna give you another raise. Well, my first assistant at WKY Radio and Television was, uh, well, I'd say it was a lucky draw. It so happened that the assistant of the farm department over at Channel 9 had become unhappy with the situation because they hadn't raised his salary frequently enough. And uh, we could pay him more over at WKY. So I talked with him and he thought it'd be a good deal. So he moved over to WKY from Channel 9. And uh, his name was Nelson Robinson. He had been a county agricultural agent before he went to Channel 9. And he was absolutely a, a perfect draw for my assistant. Nelson stayed with me for 11 years until he got promoted to the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C at head of their news release department. And he stayed there until he retired from that. A real good man. I had several other assistants, too many of them to try to name them all. But uh, I was lucky, I had, I had good assistants. And that's one reason that uh, I had a good run at WKY. At one point when uh, an independent rating company did a survey of the time slot in which our farm program came at WKY Radio TV. We had, and then remember now, this was not our survey. We didn't pay for it. It was a survey requested by the National Association of Farm Broadcasters for all of the members of the association, they found that we had, during our farm slot there, 83% of all these TVs that were turned in, that were tuned in to, channel, to uh, TV stations in the Oklahoma City area. Unheard of majority. And we had about the same kind of a rating during our farm show on radio, which started at 5.30 in the morning and was on and off with short segments until seven o'clock and the, the latter part of it was, of a radio farm show was on tape. Uh, during my stay at WKY Radio and Television, I, I had several assistants and I shall not try to mention all of them. I think my, after Nelson Robinson, I think my next assistant probably was Monty Reese. And uh, he stayed with me for several years. And finally, long toward the, the latter part of my reign at WKY Radio TV, I, uh, I advertised for assistants who'd like to take a shot at it. And I had several and finally settled with uh, what I thought was the top prospect, whose name was Ken Root. I told Ken, I said, now, I spent 11 years as a county farm extension agent, and the district agent told me, he said, I never hire a county agent unless I have met his wife. So I told Ken, uh, after Ken and I had talked and agreed on several things, I said, Ken, I'm going to have to meet your wife because I've got a rule, just like my district extension agent had, that uh, I don't hire anybody unless I've met their wife. So the next day, Ken brought his wife in. Well, Gail was absolutely a perfect one. She had been a home ex teacher 
out at Union City where Ken had been the vocational ag instructor. And she was a perfect fit for the job, so I told Ken when to come to work. And he was with me for, I don't know how many years, but many very enjoyable years. But Gail, his wife, always told him, now Ken, don't get too boastful here, because remember, you wouldn't have that job if I hadn't gone in and talked to Russell. So he, he had that hanging over his head all that time. I think pleasantly so, very pleasantly so. And Ken went from that to even better jobs and finally became uh, president of the National Association of Farm Broadcasters, which to which I had been president also back in, I don't remember what the years were, 1972, 73, somewhere back in there. And during that period, I had occasion to go on uh, many, many foreign trips. The National Association of Farm Broadcasters wanted to give scholarships to young men who were in college and wanted to maybe end up as a farm news reporter or a farm radio and TV reporter. So we designed a tour situation. It so happened that one of the farm broadcasters over in Tennessee had a wife who was working for, for a travel agency. And she got us a deal that was unbelievable. Uh, to, uh, uh, Caribbean tour on Queen Elizabeth II passenger ship. It was, it was an enjoyment sort of a trip. Well, we, we made a thing, made a thing tax deductible by making an agricultural uh, agricultural seminar at sea. And we had speakers from the Department of Agriculture, from the Oklahoma State Department of Agriculture, from uh, some commercial companies, and from Oklahoma State University. All of them agricultural specialists to make our tour legitimate and of agricultural value to the farmers and stockmen who came on that tour. When management said, well, now we'll accept your retirement, but we want you to, we want you to stick around here because we still need you. Need you when the farm men not here, we need you for some other good reasons. So I stayed there for another three years, and in the meantime, I told him, I said, now, I, I'm, I own a seed contracting business. I contracted farmers to grow seed for me. Do you object to me doing this? No, they said, we don't mind. So I developed what was, and this is not boastful bragging, my specialty was okra seed. Now, it doesn't take much okra seed to fill the world, but it is an item that's in very much in demand, a constant supply year after year after year. So I furnished the parent seed and uh, supplied the farmer with the seed to plant. It was contracted at a certain price. It was my job to see that it met the certification standards, which I did, and I developed what was known as the world's largest supplier of state-certified okra seed. Some of those, I dealt with the wholesalers only, no retail stores, no selling direct to farmers, strictly wholesale distributors, and they were scattered all over the South. Some of them could use as much as a semi-trailer load of seed a year because they were supplying many retail stores. 
I did that until I got to the point physically that I could no longer develop my parent seed because I was walking on a walker and you can't use these walkers out in plowed ground because you fall on your face. So I sold my seed operation to a good customer who had used my seed for 10 or 15 years at least, maybe longer. And he took over my parents' stock and is now operating it. And I have nothing to do with okra seed production except to talk about it. Now, while I was in the seed business, I rented some extra space down at the fairgrounds. And uh, as you may well know, we have horse shows almost constantly throughout the year. Big ones, some of them small, some of them maybe only a couple of hundred horses. Whereas some of them, during the course of a two week show, may have as many as 5,000 horses come and go. So it takes a lot of hay, it takes a lot of stall bedding, it takes a lot of bagged feed. Uh, well, they asked me one day, the, show ma the uh, state fair management, since you're using some of our space as storage for your okra seed, would you like to take over the feed and bedding supply and sell to these horse exhibitors? Well, I said, I don't know. Let me look and see what it looks like. So I did. We made a deal. And ever since 19... I guess 19... Uh, 80, one or two, I have been supplying alfalfa hay, prairie grass hay, bagged grain, stall bedding, which could be either straw or wood chips, shavings, for these dozens and dozens and dozens of horse shows that come to Oklahoma every year. It's a big operation. We've got a crew, I've got another man there that uh, is really the guy that does the real work. And he uh, will have for him anywhere from three to six or eight helpers, depending on the size of the horse show. I am I'm not an employee of the State Fair. I think I was too old that they couldn't afford the, <laughs> afford the insurance premium on me. So I, I'm an independent operator, operate as a consultant at the State Fair 12 months out of the year. And I gotta say, I love it. And as long as they'll have me around, I'll probably stay with it unless my health gets to the point that I can't get around on a walker. And that's about the story of Russell Pearson at this time. <laughs>